Hi everyone, Armored Pants here and I have another video for you in the American line, this is the tier 8 T49 and uh, this is going to be a long video, maybe the longest I've ever done because this tank requires a lot of explanation uh, but we're going to get through it together and uh, I hope you'll bear with me Now as always we're going to look at the uh, tech spec using blitzhanger.com Now the T49 is one of the most fun tanks you can play in blitz because it's fast, mobile and because of its big gun um, it's also one of the most challenging, I have to say. Uh, it's difficult. It is very much a binary tank. It's very much all positive or all negative. It's 1-0. And um, also because you're playing in tier 8 and up tier to tier 9, where you have those big guns, of course, uh, means that you are very much a sardine in a shark tank. Um, very easy to be eaten. A lot of big predators looking for you. Now, as I said, this is a kind of a Jekyll and Hyde tank. It can be super and it can be awful. And we're going to look at the reasons for that during this detailed review. Now, in terms of tank itself, I would run Coca-Cola to get the view range up to 290.4 meters. This is decent, it's not great, but it's okay. Um, there are three gun options, but there's really only two choices. There's the big derp gun, the 152 millimeter gun, and the normal 90 millimeter gun. The top gun knows what this tank is all about. It makes it different, it makes it something very special. Um, he on that top gun will give you 3000 plus dpm um, and you get 75 millimeters of B dpm and 780 hit points plus of damage but you only have two shell types heat and he heat has 152 millimeters of pen and 560 damage points now as you would expect the muzzle velocity is low at 683 meters per second or even with supercharge 888 meters per second and all shells are the same both heat and he run the same muzzle velocity so shell management is easy easier um 15.16 second reload though um, and if you run calibrated shells at 16.3 it's a massive reload therefore you need to make your shots count and you'll see that um exemplified in the gameplay now i would run vertical stabilizer because um um, it's really going to um, uh, matter because you're going to fire on the move a lot in this tank. Now you can run um, gun rammer or you can run um, calibrated shells, really up to you. If we want to look at the 90mm gun stats, they're very, very different. I mean, chalk and cheese, really. And it's, therefore, it's kind of almost two tanks depending on the gun you mount. The 90mm gun has a 5.5 second reload if you run gun rammer, 5.89 if you run calibrated shells. Therefore, you're going to be firing 10 plus rounds per minute. So this is a rapid firing tier 8 light tank. Very different to run if you run the 152mm gun where you fire 3 rounds a minute. 173 millimeters of pen with AP, 250 with heat, which is your promo, and 45 with HE with a 90mm gun. Um, now, uh, if you um, run this gun, the muzzle velocity is different, right? And it's different for every shell. So you get 914 on AP, 853 meters per second, and 732 meters per second on your Pramo and HE, respectively. And that obviously increases, as you saw there, if you use Supercharge, which I recommend you do. The damage points are 225 on AP, 200 on Heat, 270 on HE. Um, and... Um, as we said, the shell uh, muzzle velocities are different on all the shells, therefore shell management is a bit tricky. HE is significantly slower than um, AP rounds, for example. Um, now, that's the two different guns in that tank make your tank effectively two different tanks. And the playing characteristics are very different depending on that. And you're going to see that also in the gameplay because I'm going to run games running uh, both of the different guns mounted. Um, now, the... Characteristics of the tank, apart from uh, shell management, um, are pretty much the same. So you've got 10 degrees of gun depression, 20 degrees of elev elevation, which means that you have very good gun alignment. Gun alignment basically means how e easy or difficult it is to align your um, barrel with the enemy targets, and it, the uh, gun management and gun alignment on this is good. Here's the thing about this tank, it is lightning fast, 72.4 kilometers per hour, 24 in reverse, which makes it a super agile tank. And you can do things and get places in this tank on the map that you can't do in other tanks. Um, now it does have a low power to weight ratio, which is odd. 
uh, given a tank that's so fast but this is typical of american tanks and you've experienced it in the tanks on the way up here so therefore it's slow from a stop start be aware of that because you've no armor if you're out in the open and you're trying to make a fast getaway this tank won't accelerate as quickly as other light tanks it does have good concealment numbers though so a tank with 296 meters of view range needs to get in uh, within 222 meters of you to spot you up um, if you're not firing and not moving therefore it's great for spotting you can remain unspotted very very well in this tank and that's important because you don't have any armor so the con uh, concealment is an important let's say pseudo armor or substitute for armor um, I say here also your um, your armor because you don't have any is effectively your speed size and those camo numbers right so that is your pseudo or proxy um, armor and um, it's a relatively small target it moves really quickly therefore it's difficult to hit and um, but the sharks that we mentioned earlier uh, for you, that are hunting you the sardine are those big guns the 152 SEISU 152 the rim borzik the uh, other t49s by the way um waffle tractors if you're up up tier t30s if you're up tiered but they all have long aiming times right and slow traverse and if you're moving at top speed in this thing you're a small target you're difficult to hit so therefore speed your camo numbers they are your armor they're the only armor you have so that means keep moving don't stop and if you do stop make sure you're in uh, soft or hard cover using your camo numbers do not stop out in the open and especially do not go out in the open if you don't know where the big guns are on the other team and you're going to see a perfect example of this in play when we look at the first game which is on so uh, first game that we're going to look at which is on castilla in this tank now um, we're gonna as i said um this tank is very complicated and difficult tank to play because there's big guns and very experienced players good players up at tier 8 tier 9 where you're gonna play and as you have no armor you can be one shotted so this tank can be frustrating therefore it can be a jekyll and hyde it can be binary plus and minus and you need to play to its strengths and characteristics if you want to do well in this tank now let's take a time out here i mentioned that this tank can get places that other tanks can't here's a perfect example of that right most tanks can't get up this hill and um, by the way little trick here what i do in this tank is i don't go all the way up to the top of the hill why in case i'm spotted up something fast is coming towards me it means i can roll back a lot easier i have the gravity of the hills naturally inclined to get me out of um difficulties quicker but as there's nothing coming then i can mount the top of this hill and look at fields of fire that that opens up for me and you can do that in this tank um, and you can't do that in all tanks you can do in some other tanks like the dracula uh, the m41 a at m41 bulldog before etc but that you need really really fast tanks um, to get up um, inclines like that and this tank can do that so this gives you other elements of your get to get your gameplay which you don't have with um, other light tanks and especially now with medium tanks now this is castilla first game we're going to look at i'm going to use the speed of the tank to get that big gun into play as quickly as possible now um again look i can go up here in this tank you can't do that in all tanks so it means i don't have to go out and come back to get behind these rocks i can go straight to them again an advantage and what i'm what am i doing here well normally in a light tank i would go straight out to spot up the enemy right but this is a light tank that has okay um, view range but not the best and that's a problem if there's an ru251 or another light tank with good view range 300 meters plus in your team they will spot you up before you spot them if you take the lead position in spotting and if there's a big gun on the other team he will he can smash you up before you've even gotten into the game now, there was an ru251 on the other team i checked the reds list check the setup so i knew he was there and that's why i didn't go out to spot in the lead now i slow this right down because in real time when i played this game i thought i was going to get a max he roll on him but i didn't because when i slowed down you see i hit him in the tracks but here's the thing about this tank the splash damage on this is huge so therefore if you have a low roll kill like him anything usually under 300 damage points you don't need to worry about using heat or aiming you just load up a he round which is your primo round by the way in this tank and you just fire it and once you hit 
you're gonna you're gonna clear off that tank now again this is what i mean about uh, the difficulty of playing this tank fully lined up on that ru i should easily pen him and get a max roll you know around six seven hundred plus damage points clear him off but i don't i see so slow the right down i hit him in the back panel um, on the turret should have gone straight through but it didn't the gun handling on this tank with the big gun is patchy if you need your full rolls when you need a low roll kill it delivers time and time again which you saw both on the amx and on the ru there but that is a problem and another difficulty of playing this tank because you've got such a long reload now this is what we we're talking about earlier do not go out in the open when there's unspotted big guns when those sharks are out there that's why i roll back see what the tiger did he rolled out unspotted isu out there shark eats tiger lesson learned hopefully that tiger won't do that again um now you cannot go out and um, cannot venture out into the open in this tank if there's unspotted big guns i knew that isu was out there i didn't know where he was that's why i stopped my advance pulled back and went back into cover and you saw i made the right decision because that tiger just got smashed by the isu and we're one tank down we're also one tank down in the game overall it's three to four but little t49 can turn that around because he is agile quick and with this gun he can do a lot of damage now i've spotted up uh, the su 152 now i know where he is sorry i think i was calling him isu earlier on uh, doesn't matter big gun right and um, now i know where he is now i know where i can go in safety i know there's four tanks out there i know where the big gun is so now i can move again using the power and speed of this tank i'm able to get into a very good position where i open up huge fields of fire I take my low roll on that Tiger too. As you can see, I couldn't pen him with heat. Uh, but now I can when he's side on. But again, this is what I mean about uh, the difficulties of playing this tank and the challenges. You see how long the reload is. Also, look at the aiming time. By the time I aim onto this Tiger, um, you know, he has moved position. Luckily, he comes flat onto me. I can put a heat round into him. Comet thinks the game is over in their favor, saying good game. It is not over at all. And we are actually going to win this game. And um, again, look, I can use the speed and agility of this tank to get into a position. I have a low roll kill. Um, and I don't need to worry about bouncing or anything like that. I just fire and the splash damage on my HE round. I don't have to pen him. is going to take him out. Now I'm coming to, t uh, to challenge the SU. And you're going to get a good example here of how patchy um, the gun handling is on this. I decided to go for a max roll on the heat. And I just fluff that shot. I get hit. It could have been a lot worse. Um, thankfully my ally put some damage into him. And I decide to not mess around. I'm just going to go for a low roll uh, HE kill there we go cleared him off and now we're in a 2v1 situation and this it may seem like the most logical of things to say if you're an experienced player but if you're not an experienced player and i know a lot of the people that watch the videos are new to the game do not go out in front of this vk you know the temptation is if you're an inexperienced player is to go to your ally to help him in that fight take your time and go around the back and um, because going into the front of that vk is going to be useless you're going to do nothing uh, go behind them firstly it's a distraction secondly you can do more damage you saw there i couldn't pen him with heat but i just went with he got a decent enough splash damage roll on him and now i can clear him off low splash damage roll don't need to pen him just use the splash damage and there we go um and that's how to utilize this tank uh, 2.5k damage not big um, i've done a lot more damage than that but i got five kills but for the base capture and spotting it delivered a lot of xp you can see and um, we also damaged um five of the enemy tanks and we turned what should have been a loss for us into a win and a good game 
both by myself and also the uh, VK on my team too. Rally Walters medal, Top Gun and Mastery Badge delivered. So a good example of using the speed, agility and power of that tank to um, really turn games into your favour. Game 2, Himmelsdorf. Again we will see uh, an example of how um, this tank can be very effective in a game. Um, we are going to utilize the uh, speed, uh, agility, um, the ability of this tank to get around the map um, and we are going to deliver another mastery game with the T49. Um, so what I've done as always, check the setup, check the green list, check the red list. Um, I've gone to B, I want to capture B. Supremacy games as we've said before are all about um, a getting as many supremacy points as you can as early on as possible. Um, the analogy I've used before, it's like your pension, invest as early as possible because you reap the benefits later on. Now this Dracula, um, don't know why, but he's just decided to come for me. Um, you can see here, now I get a big roll on him, 758. Now Dracula obviously has a, is a very fast tank. It also has a much faster reloading gun than me, and I don't have any armor, so he's gonna pen me as much um, almost every time he fires what you should do in these situations with this tank is just keep moving you will um, get some uh, bounces troll bounces you will also force the enemy into missing some fluffing some shots and in the case of that Dracula um, he missed his first shot and then he panicked um, T-44 also hit him and then we were able to clear him off but I did sustain quite a bit of damage. I've lost over half of my hit points already. Now, uh, I thought um, I might be able to get a shot off there, but now I roll back, decide to reset camo. Now, I've played the Rim Borsic on this uh, map before. I've also played against him. I know it's 90% certain he's gonna roll back up here. So I'm waiting for him. I, have, um, I know he's gonna be there. Slow it right down, take him out. Now, I'm pretty sure he was about half a second away from pulling the trigger on me, and he would have killed me. But because I anticipated where he was going to come, I got an extra second or so on the aiming time and was able to clear him out. Plus, I'm able to pre-aim my gun to where he is going to be. Um, and then when he pops out, I'm able to fire the round off. And because it's HE, I don't need to pen him. Um, I just need to get it on the target and hit him and it's gonna clear him off which it did and again that's just utilizing game experience from playing other tanks um, on the same map and um, because there is many predictable places that um, uh, different types of tanks will go in different maps and that's one where uh, TDs like to go you saw there again how patchy um, the gun handling is right why is the gun handling patchy well it's basic physics right it's a very short stubby barrel right barrel length determines muzzle velocity which determines accuracy which determines shell penetration which is why a rifle has higher muzzle velocity than a handgun and is more accurate and does more damage and um, so that's why it basic physics why it is has a patchy gun handling that's an example there the shot on the VK of what you can do with this tank and splash damage you don't need the pen you can fire off a round like as I did like that I know it's not going to pen his turret it doesn't have to pen splash damage um, can be anything from 250 to 350 you saw there I got a 320 roll on the VK didn't need to pen him and that's an advantage of this tank again you see the mobility of this tank um, I'm gonna go for a HE round because the back of American tanks are vulnerable HE round into him big big roll on that T-34 and you see the speed of the tank I came across um, the gun handling is slow on a T-34 fluff the shot on me I get a round behind him get a shot into the vulnerable armor part at the back of the tank massive roll onto him and then allow my teammates to come in and clear him off when he's just a one shot good solid gameplay utilizing the strengths of this tank which are its mobility its agility its speed and then utilizing the gun and um, now the gun handling is patchy and we just discussed why but here's the thing right 
the closer you are to, to the target then the less the patchy gun handling is an issue simple right just think about it as with any normal gun if you're standing beside the target the chances of you hitting it are a lot higher than if you're standing far away which is why um, I was confident the shot in the T-34 was going to go right through and give me a high alpha roll. But when you go to distances over 100 meters in this tank, um, the gun handling can be patchy and can let you down. But if you're in doubt and you need to do some damage, fire the HE round because that's not going to bounce and you're going to get some splash damage. So there we go. Another example, another mastery game delivered. Um, only eight shots fired. Uh, you can see that you can do huge amounts of damage in this tank with a limited number of shots fired you need to make your shots count a missed shot in this tank well you've got f almost 16 second reload so you're going to be inactive in the game for a long time and that's why this tank is can be very frustrating and if you're unaware of this patchy gun handling if you're unaware of the uh, let's say um, uncertainty of the rounds when you when fired in this tank it can be extremely frustrating you get this tank you load up the big gun you've seen other players playing it you um fire off a heat round nothing happens you wait 16 seconds you fire off another one nothing happens you're spotted up big gun hits you and you're so frustrated right and then you go on forums you're talking about ghost rounds and things not happening and what's wrong with this tank etc right you have to understand that the tank is patchy it's a Jekyll and Hyde tank it's all or nothing be aware of that and when you're playing it at the start play safe you know take your take your low roll and your HE make sure you do some damage by the way the HE by fired by this tank blows a lot of modules on the enemy tank a lot of modules and you only see that later on when you look at the efficiency stats on the tank now as promised I have a third game for you this is the same tank loaded up the same way but i have the 90 millimeter gun loaded on it and you'll see it's a completely different tank with completely different gameplay and um, what i decided to do here is i'm going towards a i read the setup i thought we might come up against the sp1c um, and um, uh, rightly so here he is now um, i'm running the um, as i said the 90 millimeter gun switch up to he i can pen the uh, sp1c on this no problem at all pen him again nice round nice roll onto him i'm going to clear him off this next roll i don't know why he's driving backwards towards me that is, doesn't seem a good option at all now there's my compatriot my peer in the t49 he's running this the 152 the big derp gun definitely don't want him getting a shot on me and um, but you can see the tank is completely different here right you know you're going to fire loads of shots gonna have much lower alpha rolls but the gun handling is hugely better right you um, are gonna have far more reliable gun handling on this and it's gonna be far like uh, for more like playing a normal blitz tank actually it's very similar to um, handling the uh, and we're gonna have a look here at the gun handling here you see you know you can f make shots like that which you would not be able to do with running the derp gun and again, we're going to see another one here. Eye the needle kind of shot, small as a target, and he's moving. Put one into the back of him. Get another nice plus 200 alpha roll. And because you're loaded up again already, you know, the low alpha rolls um, don't really matter so much because you can fire off a lot of rounds. Now, um, this tank in, with this gun loaded is very similar to the M41 Walker Bulldog that you would have played before. And therefore, if you're grinding up on this tank to the T54E1, then uh, you might want to consider loading the 90mm gun onto this tank. And the reason for that is that you will find the gun handling much more similar to tanks you've played before, uh, like the Walker before, but also other tanks you've played in different lines. Um, and you'll find it far less frustrating. You, of course, have many of the, in fact, all of the same. Um, disadvantage in fact not having armor the lower view range etc but you'll find the gun handling better and more familiar and far therefore far less frustrating um, however if you're going up to the t92 e1 
and um, that has a very similar gun to the 152 millimeter gun on the t49 in terms of its characteristics load gun handling firing shell uh, muzzle velocities etc therefore if you're going to that tank and of course a lot of you will be going to that tank because you want to get your hands on that tank especially now as it fires missiles who knows in the future if it will but the promo round the heat round on that is a missile round and we're going to review that tank soon as well I'm just collecting footage on it at the moment then definitely you want to go the 152 millimeter because the skills that you will learn using the t49 with the 152 millimeter will be directly transferable to that but of course if you're not going for that if you're going for the t5041 then perhaps a 90 millimeter gun is a better option for you just some food for thought guys now um i make a bit of a mistake here i didn't know um that tiger was gonna come face onto me which is not what you want really i decided to track him here rather than go for certain damage because i didn't know my ally in the louvre was coming to help me and i really wanted to make sure i could get away so that's why i tracked him and um, because i wanted to get around behind him which is what i'm going to do now because that's really where this tank excels regardless of which gun you're running but this tank excels when it is behind and to the sides of the reds you do not want to be coming front on you see there just look at that tiger front on contrast this to when i come around to the side of this tiger and then it's all bets are off now the sardine is eating the tiger um you know and um i made a mistake there by the way i was driving zoomed in and drove into the building um, and that allowed the tiger to get that shot off on me um, i got a bit lucky that he low rolled me um, but um didn't make the same mistake twice and um, was able to take him out using the speed agility and maneuverability of this tank um, and then once i get in around the sides and back of him it's game over he didn't stand a chance now you can see here run the t49 hornet with um the 90 millimeter gun you can still do very well another mastery match delivered uh, 3.8k plus of damage a slot of spotting done and really utilized the speed agility of the tank got out there did some damage a bit of a carry for my team as well um, and you can see it, you can perform and do very well with the 90 millimeter gun just as you can with the 152 gun handling and gun characteristics though are completely different so just please bear that in mind when you're playing this tank so anyway let's have a recap because we had a lot of information there right so this is a tank of contrasts it can be great and it can be awful it can be extremely frustrating largely down to the gun handling but also the lack of armor it is two guns really the 90 millimeter 152 and that basically makes it two different tanks the derp gun of course is the fun gun um, and it's also great practice as we discussed for the tier 9 and tier 10 um, currently rocket tanks the t92e1 and the sheridan so therefore choose your route and therefore choose your gun accordingly if you do choose the 152 gun just be aware of the long reload you need to make those rounds count tank is decent power to weight ratio it's not great for a tank that's so fast so therefore it's sluggish from a stop start you need to be aware of that but traverse is very good as you saw in those circle of death scenes that we looked at in the gameplay it's agile and excellent brawler the gun alignment is excellent so utilize that and um, you know lining up your targets is easy in this with this tank and um, but your basic um, assets are speed view range and the concealment that is a winning combo but you need to stay safe because you have no armor you need to be aware of those sharks looking for you the sardine in that shark tank so therefore spot and relay those positions that's going to help you and help your team simple um, but be aware of the view range of other tanks out there for example if it's an ru251 or something with a big view range don't take the lead because you'll be spotted up earlier and it can lead to all sorts of damage so cheers mush thanks for watching i hope you found it useful i hope you found it enjoyable and i guess all that remains for me to say is pants off